Good morning, good evening, and good everybody. My name is Sarah, and today we're doing the Winter Wonderland book tag. Now, I thought I had way more time to film this video, but then I realized tomorrow is Christmas and Thursday is really late to be filming a video with editing and processing time for a video that goes up Friday morning. So I have to do this now and the sun is setting and my camera's dying. So let's be real quick about this and dive on in. Now, normally I would leave the original video linked down below. However, that video has since been deleted. So I'll just leave the questions down below and hopefully you guys can pick this book tag up later because winter is officially here. Christmas doesn't mean winter is over. It means winter is starting. So be prepared for the cold. So on to the questions. Question number one, what book is so happy and sweet and makes you feel a warm and fuzzy inside? Now I normally never read books that are happy and sweet and make me feel warm and fuzzy. So I had a very limited number of books to choose from. That being said, I did have a clear winner for this. Red, white, and royal blue. This is just such a sweet, like, contemporary romance. This book takes place in an alternative universe where in 2016 a woman ran for president and she ended up winning a totally fictional character and her kids are half Latino and our main character is one of the kids of course and he has this hating relationship with the Prince of Wales. When they meet up again later for a wedding that they both have to attend, they end up accidentally knocking over a wedding cake. And so this, there's this whole PR stunt done to make the world believe that no, there isn't an international incident going on. The Prince of Wales and the first son of America are totally best friends. Look at them hanging out. And during this PR stunt, they actually realize that they don't hate each other, they love each other. So this is a star-crossed lovers hates love romance set in modern America. I think it's really amazing and well done. I normally hate contemporary romances. This, this was amazing. Question number two, what is your favorite book with a white cover? Now I picked two. One of them is a manga. I figured if I'm picking a manga, I need to pick a normal novel for all the rest of my viewers who don't read manga. But the manga is, well, was my first choice. So I picked Blue Exorcist and let's talk about love. Blue Exorcist is Here's the thing, every time I read this manga or I read fan fiction or I look at the fan art, I become obsessed with it. And then I'm obsessed with it for a while and then I kind of forget about it. And then I see a piece of fan art or I read a piece of fan fiction and I remember how amazing the series is. This series follows the story of the son of Satan who grew up in a monastery raised by priests. And one day Satan comes up and is like, I'm going to claim you as my child now. And accidentally, well, not accidentally, the man who is raising Ren, who is our main character, gets killed in the process. And Ren decides that he hates Satan with a dying passion. He's going to become an exorcist and kill his father. That is the entire plot of this series. And no no one can know he's the son of Satan as he's attending this cram school to learn to become an exorcist. And all the characters are amazing and I love the setup and I love the art and this entire series is so good. I highly recommend it. Let's talk about love on the other hand. This again is a contemporary romance but it's following our main character who is asexual by romantic. This was I think the first book I read with clear asexual rep. There wasn't just a background character. This was the plot of the book where our main character going through college trying to figure out if she's in love with someone after her last girlfriend had broke up with her because she was ace and it's trying to figure out the whole relationship dynamic is trying to figure out the whole like where do I belong in society dynamic because she's being forced to go to college by her parents but she doesn't have like her dream job doesn't require a college degree and so she feels like she's wasting her time there there's also great therapy representation in here you don't have to go to therapy because you have a problem sometimes people just need a person to talk to so again this is a great book some people don't quite like the formatting I didn't mind it but this was a debut novel so you can kind of see that in the writing style Question number three, you're sitting in a nice warm chair, drinking some hot chocolate, snuggled up in a onesie. What monster book are you reading? Now, I wasn't clear if they meant monster book by like the size of the book or monster book as in a book about monsters. So I picked one for each. My monster book, which was huge and heavy, is Renegades. I normally never read big books. So this was like the biggest one I could find that I have read. And the book about monsters was Magnus Chase. Uh, really all of the, the Percy Jackson books, but Magnus Chase because it's my favorite series. Renegades is a book that takes place after the superpowers have risen up in society and basically destroyed it. It was called the Age of Anarchy. And then 20 years ago, heroes rose up and reclaimed society, trying to rebuild it, trying to reconstruct society in the way that they think can function. Our main character is the niece of the lead villain, and she is sent to infiltrate the hero society, try to take them down from the inside and bring back the Age of Anarchy. And again, this is a forbidden romance because our main character, the villain of the story ends up falling in love with the son of the two biggest heroes. Again, the this does have gay representation in this, the son of the two biggest heroes. The two biggest heroes are both men. <laughs> they are both his father. His mother was a hero before she died and the two men ended up taking him in. So 
yes, amazing. I have yet to read the third book in the series. It is sitting on my shelf. I have yet to get to it though, but I love it. It's just a bit heavy, but you fly through it really fast. It's like a really quick read for its size. Magnus Chase and the Gods of Asgard, on the other hand, is the Percy Jackson spin-off series. It follows the cousin of Annabeth as he ends up dying and realizing that he's taken to Valhalla because his father is a Norse deity. It is all about him trying to stop Ragnarok. It is only a three book series, which is forever heartbreaking to me because this is the best series in my opinion. And Trials of Apollo, which is currently my least favorite series is getting five books. So I'm like, why? Why does this not have more books in it? Because I'm in love with the cast. I'm in love with the characters. Valhalla is this amazing place where all the heroes who die in battle with a weapon in their hand are taken to, to train for Ragnarok. You cannot permanently die in Valhalla. So everything they do there is to the death. It's chess to the death or a roulette to the death or like sweeping to the death. And you always wake up a couple hours later perfectly new and healthy. So that is like a huge gag factor of the book until they have to leave Valhalla and try and go save the world with out anyone knowing because it is not their quest. So I love it. There's lots of monsters in it. It's just amazing. Next question. It's snowing outside and you decide to have a snowball fight. Who are you going to have a snowball fight with? I chose Fred and George from Harry Potter. Now I have to do a disclaimer because of what happened. I do not support JK Rowling and her beliefs on transgender and trans women and all her transphobia actions. I refuse to support her. So I will no longer be buying any Harry Potter merchandise or Harry Potter books. So I will not be completing this set of 20 year anniversary books, but that does not mean I'm going to stop loving the world. You can like the art and hate the artist. So Fred and George, still some of the most amazing twins and I forever hate that what happened to them, but I will just love to have a snowball fight with them, especially because I don't like snowball fights. I just think a hint of magic would just make it wonderful. Next question, your fire is going out. What book do you going to share the last few chapters with it as kindling? I chose Daughter of a Burning City. I loved this book until the last few chapters. I hated the reveal. I hated what it did to the characters. I hated the what it chose to represent. So Daughter of a Burning City is a book where it takes place in this magical wandering city that was once burned down and now risen up again as a carnival. It travels the world with wonder and delight and everyone in there is slightly deformed. Everyone in there is slightly unusual. That's why they belong in the burning city. Our main character is an illusionist and she can create such amazing illusions she like she basically creates humans, but she doesn't believe they're humans until one of them is murdered. This is a murder mystery book as they travel the world trying to find who killed her illusions, who killed her family. There is asexual representation in here. My problem is the last few chapters, this is a spoiler, but is representation, so I don't count it as spoiler. My problem is that the asexual character was an illusion. <sighs> There's so much I can say about that. Um, First of all, if your question is, are these characters real, don't choose to have one of them to have a sexuality that people already are fighting to make sure people believe is real. Just don't, don't have a sexuality be viewed as unhuman, especially in this context. And I loved this book until that was revealed along with a whole bunch of other things. And again, it's a great book. Just burn the last like five chapters. You'll be great. And the final question, what book is so close to your heart that you would give it as a gift to make sure someone else begins reading? I chose Percy Jackson. I mean, I didn't read this until much later. Like I read this book last year and I read all the other books in the Percy Jackson and the Priority universe except for my like, King Chronicles and I read King Chronicles in school, yeah, but I read all of that this year and I felt like I missed so much in my childhood. So seriously, you guys, if you wanna get into reading, just saying, go back to middle grade. It's so nice and easy. This is one of the best books out there. And okay, I personally think that Percy Jackson does first chapters the best. Like I've never read a book that really like gets me in the first chapter like Percy Jackson does. So if you really want to get into reading, middle grades are the way. Of course, all of Rick's books are the way, especially Magnus Chase. Magnus Chase is the best. So that is all I have for the Winter Wonderman book tag. Thank you guys all so much for watching. If you want me to do any more winter themed book tags, I know it's kind of late in the year, especially since it's going to New Year's, but like I said, winter begins at Christmas, you guys, so not too late for anything. <laughs> but once again, if you liked any of the books I talked about and want to have a conversation, please begin that in the comment section down below. I, I just, I love talking to you guys. And while you're there, don't forget to hit like and subscribe.
And as always, good night, good evening, and good morning, everybody.